In this lesson, we are going to show some strategies how to solve formulas. What is a formula? Well, formula is a general rule describing relationship between various quantities, usually variables. You can think of a formula like a recipe. For example, a recipe how to make a good dough. You may use the same recipe to, for example, bake a cake, but it depends what kind of components you will start with. That's how good the cake will turn out. It could be a vanilla cake or chocolate cake or any other flavor. So formula works the same way. You have some sort of recipe what to do with the variables and by following this formula you obtain the value of the desired variable. We are already familiar with various geometric formulas. Let's review them. For example, if we have a rectangle or parallelogram, we may talk about area or perimeter. Recall that the perimeter of an object is the length around the object. So in the case of rectangle, you are going to take twice the base and twice this height. So 2b plus 2h. Similarly, in parallelogram, you're taking twice one side and twice the other side to get perimeter. To get area, you always refer to the base and height. In most of the shapes, that's the common theme, base times height. Except for if you have a triangle, then you take half of the base times height, because if you would take just base times height, you will obtain area of a rectangle, which is exactly twice as large as the area of this triangle. We can see it in the following way. If we cut the triangle by the height into two smaller triangles, so each of those smaller triangles, for example, this one, has a dual triangle with the same area that completes this rectangle. The same idea is here. The triangle that I will mark in green now will have a dual over here. So you can notice that in a big rectangle we really have two of those triangles. That's why the area of a triangle is half of the area of a rectangle. Again, with perimeter, you just add all the distances around the triangle, so A, B, and C. The square is a case of a rectangle, so we shouldn't be surprised that the perimeter is just four of the sides, so it's four times S, and area is side times side, so it's S square. A slightly different shape, but very important shape in mathematics is a circle. The dimension that determines the size of the circle is its radius. So in terms of radius R, the circumference, which is perimeter around the circle, is the same as 2 pi R. Also, we know that 2R is the same as diameter. So instead of saying 2 pi R, we can claim the circumference is pi times diameter. The area of the circle is pi R square. Since these two formulas are used very often in mathematics, we really need to remember them. How to memorize them? Well, I always look at the exponent. Here we have pi r square. The radius is squared, so it gives me the square. So it tells me that we are using square units to measure this area. So it tells me that we are going to use square units to measure it, which means we're talking about area. Now, in circumference, we've been using 2 pi r. So r was with the exponent 1, a linear, a linear measurement, so a one-dimensional measurement. So we are talking about length, which must be circumference. Both of these formulas refer to three signs, 2, pi, and r. Here we have pi, r, and a little 2, but this 2 serves as an exponent rather than as a factor. So that's the difference between them. Some other geometric formulas for 3D shapes. Here we have a rectangular solid. It's a box. Sometimes it's called rectangular prism. We can talk about surface area, S, or we can talk about volume, 
of a 3D object. So here the volume formula is easier if we have length, width and height. Those are three dimensions of rectangular prism. Then the volume is given simply by multiplying those three dimensions. So volume is length times width times height. To find surface area of a box, we need to find areas of three different faces. So for example, the front face and the back face. They are the same, so it's enough to take area of one of them and multiply by 2. So that will be h times l. 2 times h times l. The other faces is, for example, the top in green and the bottom, so the two bases. So in this case it's length times width and double it. Length times width, we have it here, 2 times length times width. And finally, the third pair of sides is the side and the other side over here. So 2 times width times height, width times height. So basically we take those three dimensions, length, width and height, and list products of any two of them, summarize them and multiply by two. In the regular cone, with the radius of the base R and height H, the volume will be taken as one-third pi R square H. So we have two dimensions hidden in R square and another dimension hidden in H. So altogether it's three-dimensional measurement. So that really tells me that volume of a cone is the same as one-third of a volume of a cylinder. Now, let's jump for a second to a cylinder and we also have the circle in the bottom with radius r and the height h. The volume of a cylinder is the area of the base, which is area of the circle, pi r square, times the height h, times h. So pi r square h. Notice that the volume of a cone has a lot to do with the volume of a cylinder. It's basically one-third of a volume of a cylinder. If I want to see it, maybe it's a good idea to draw a circle in the top, which is a replica of the base. And it happens that this cone occupies one-third of the volume of the cylinder with the same radius and height. Now, surface area of the cylinder is given by the formula pi r l, where l is actually the length of this side. This is l. So l can be expressed in terms of r and h by using Pythagorean theorem. So l by itself is square root of r square and h square. So surface area of a cone is the side area of the cone, which is pi r l, plus the area of the base, which in our case is a circle. So area of the base pi r square. Now we have one more important shape, it's a sphere. These two formulas, similarly like with a circle, we actually need to memorize. So surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r square, its area, so the dimension is 2. In the volume of a sphere, it should be three-dimensional measurement, so we have 4 thirds pi r cube. Now those coefficients, 4 thirds for the volume and 4 for the surface area, we just need to memorize. How do we solve formulas? Well, there can be a lot of different formulas and I can't cover every single case. However, I can remind you of certain strategies that may help you to solve various formulas. For example, it's a good idea to highlight the variable that is of your interest and treat other variables as numbers. Pretend that they are numbers because it's a lot easier for us to solve for example, specific equation rather than a formula. Here we have first example, 2L plus 2W equals P. That comes from perimeter of a rectangle with length L and width W. We're going to solve it for L. So let's highlight L or write it in different color 
and keep this in mind, focus your eyes on L and try to undo all the other operations. That means leave the L by itself on that side, bring everything else to the other side. The first step that I would suggest is to bring the 2W to the other side by subtracting the 2W from both sides. So we start with the 2L and it's equal to P, whatever it was, it's still there, and bring the 2W to the other side minus 2W. Finally, we want to leave L by itself, so we want to get rid of 2, therefore we want to divide the whole equation by 2. We end up with L equals P minus 2W divided, the whole thing is divided by 2. This could also be written as L equals P over 2 minus 2W over 2 which means 2 and 2 we can cancel, so we end up with just W. So we can leave the answer this way or that way. Both are equivalent. Aside of highlighting the variable that we are solving for, it's a good idea to keep in mind that we are always undoing the operations, so we are using opposite operations. If you want to get rid of addition, you use subtraction. If you want to get rid of multiplication, you use division. If you want to undo squaring, you use square root and the other way around. Here we have example. This formula refers to arithmetic sequence. We would like to solve this formula for n. n is in this term. We're going to leave this term till the very end. And we're going to move the other term a1 to the other side. So formally, we're subtracting a1 from both sides of the equation because we are undoing this addition. So we end up with a n minus a1 equals n minus 1 d. The next step would be to get closer to the n. n is in this bracket, so we can get rid of this d. I have to undo the multiplication, so I am going to use division. Divide both sides of the equation by d. Therefore, the d will travel to the denominator to the other side. And over here we don't have d, so we have just n minus 1. Finally, we would like to get rid of this 1, so the opposite operation will be addition. Add 1 to both sides. And I'm going to write the final answer over here. So it's a n minus a1 over d plus 1. That's my n. Obviously, this formula can be written in different form. For example, we could bring uh, these two quantities under one denominator. So let's try how this will work. If I keep common denominator here, d, then in the numerator I have a n minus a 1 plus d, because 1 becomes d over d. So either like this or like that, both answers correct. In the following example, we have the variable in denominator. That's not a good position. We wish to have the variable in the numerator. So keep your variable in the numerator. How to do that? Well, let's multiply the whole equation by the denominator, multiply everything by 1 minus r, to bring it to the other side into the numerator. So what we end up with is s times 1 minus r equals a1, and that's my r. Now I want to be closer to r, so what I want to do is get rid of this s first. So let's divide by s. I end up with 1 minus r equals a1 over s. And here's my r. Finally, I want to keep r by itself with a positive sign. So the best idea would be to move the r to the other side and move a1 over s to the left side. Let's write it over here. So it will be 1 stays wherever it was. Then I want to move a1 over s with a minus and bring the r to the right to make it positive. And again, this is already a good answer, but we could write this 
under one denominator, so under S. Then the numerator would become S minus A1. So again, both answers correct. In the following example, we have our variable in two different places. It is in the numerator, but it's in two different places. So the strategy here that we use is factoring. Keep S in one place, keep your variable in one place, usually by factoring. So let's factor S out. And then we have 1 from the first term minus dt equals p. So now it's enough to divide by this bracket to the other side and we have the final answer as s equals p over this whole bracket 1 minus dt. So those are the most important strategies that you have to keep in mind when solving formulas. Obviously you need to practice on various formulas to be fluent with it.